Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of Jack the Mind Sculptor. I'm here today with episode two of my Return to Ravnica spoilers and mechanics analysis. So yeah, let's go ahead and get started with going right back into the mechanics of the three guilds I didn't talk about yet. And the first one I want to talk about is the Is It Guild, which is the blue-red guild. Now their mechanic is Overload. And what Overload basically is, is it changes uh, the text of a spell. Say instead of doing like three damage to target creature, uh, you could change the text of the spell to deal 3 damage to each creature. And so, one of the first card spoil that uses this overload mechanic is uh, Mizium Mortars, which is a spell that costs 1 color, so and 1 red, and you could deal 4 damage to target creature you don't control, and if you pay 3 colorless and 3 red, which is the overload cost, uh, you basically get a one-sided flame wave, and it deals 4 damage to each creature you don't control. So a pretty powerful card, you might see a lot of play because it is a sweeper. Elmizium Mortars is interesting design-wise because there are two things you can really affect. One is the cost, you know, you can always uh, increase the mana for the overload cost or you can have alternate costs such as paying life, sacrificing creatures, etc. And the second thing, because all it does is change the word target to each, uh, what you're actually limited by in the second part of the effect is what you want to limit the targets to. So, you know, right now, the two spells that are spoiled just say, like, creatures you don't control. In the future, it could be, you know, all creatures, it could be uh, all red creatures, all white creatures, etc. So, like, a, a sample card that could happen, and not in this uh, set, but in the next one, would be, like, a, a replacement for Slagstorm, where you can deal, uh, you know, three damage to target each creature for one colors and one red, or if you overload for one colors and two red, you could deal three damage to all creatures to each creature, sorry. So like Overload is pretty cool. It doesn't excite me too much because it's, you know, you're basically choosing between uh, a single target spell versus some kind of sweeper in general. So, you know, the design space not too exciting, but it is going to make for some uh, efficient and cool spells, so eh, not too bad. Uh, the second mechanic uh, is the Azorius mechanic. Azorius is the white and blue guild and their mechanic is Detain. Now Detain, what it does is basically um, target permanent. It could actually be a permanent a creature right now. Uh, it's actually uh, templated so you could detain anything and the detained permanent cannot attack, block, or use activated abilities until the beginning of your next turn. So it's basically a, a temporary arrest if you guys remember that card. And so the current iterations, the, the cards that explode are like Azorius uh, Justiciar for uh, two white or two colors and two white. When he comes into the battlefield you can detain up to two target creatures so, you know, he's a temporary arrest. You can blink him with Restoration Angel to do some more arrest shenanigans. And the design space for this mechanic is actually pretty open because it's an effect. You know, you can actually put Detain on anything. You could put Detain on a triggered ability. You could put it on an activated ability. You know, there, there could be a creature in the future that says, like, two colorless, white, white, Detain target creature. And, you know, you could, like, machine gun Detain all of your opponent's creatures. And uh, it's actually templated so that you can actually Detain land in the future. So we might see a cool card that's like a mini Armageddon, where it's like two colors and one white, um, you know, detain all lands. So it's like a one-sided Armageddon, because of course, you know, you can always tap your land for mana first and float the mana, and then cast that, and then your opponent is um, mana screwed for one turn. So uh, detain's a pretty interesting mechanic. I'll be interested to see where uh, Wizards goes from here with it. And the third mechanic and last one that I'll discuss is Populate, which is a uh, part of the Selesna Guild, which is the green and white guild. Now, Populate is kind of limited in that it can, all it does is, you know, put a copy of a creature token that you control into play. And so the, the card, the first card that was spoiled for Return of Ravka was actually Rootborn Defenses with the Populate mechanic. And this mechanic, uh, in this card was like a two colors and one white. You get to populate and then creatures you control are indestructible this turn. And this card actually has a lot of use with Geist of St. Traft because, uh, you know, you attack him with Geist of St. Traft, you get your 4-4 a flying Angel token, and if they block your guys, you cast uh, Rootborn Defenses, he, uh, your guys is indestructible, and you get to put in a 4 4 Flying Angel token that will not go away at the end of the turn. So, you know, pretty cool card. Uh, Populate is definitely going to be limited, though, by the type of creature tokens that Return to Ravnica has. Uh, the most exciting one we've seen so far is uh, the 8-8 eight, eight, uh, Grove Guardian with uh, Vigilance. And uh, there's also like a 2-2 two, two, uh, Vigilance Knight token you get from Selesna Charm. So uh, depending on where they go in the future, I think it's going to be limited actually by the type of creature tokens. So maybe uh, you'll see some card like a, an explosive vegetation type card, 
where you have a 1-1 land war elf and you can populate that. So that'll be interesting to see where they go. And uh, some other cards that really excite me, uh, people have been definitely talking about a card called Abrupt Decay, which is one black, one green. Uh, it cannot be countered and you can destroy target permanent, a uh, non-land permanent, with converted mana cost less than three. Now this card is super powerful, it's going to make waves in Legacy and Modern because a lot of the, the current metagame right now is full of like Delver, Tarmogoyce, and you know, Swords, and all of those things d d die to Abrupt Decay, and Abrupt Decay can't be countered. So look for this card to pretty much see play everywhere, it's going to be a game-changing card, and so it's definitely a card you want to stock up on. Another card that's interesting, just spoiled recently, is a Desecration Demon. So this guy is a two colors, two black, flying 6-6 demon that has the drawback of at the beginning of each combat, an opponent can sacrifice a creature to tap the demon and put a plus one, plus one counter on it. Now, number one, like the flavor on this demon is great. You know, your opponent's sacrificing creatures to appease the demon and it grows more powerful with each sacrifice. And in terms of power, it's actually kind of interesting. Now, like Obliterator didn't, uh, was pretty good, but because, you know, Obliterator could be vapor snagged and all that stuff, you know, even though it was a 5-5 trample, it didn't see that much play. And though this demon is a 6-6 flying, you have to realize that the drawback, you know, they can sacrifice, say, a grave crawler to tap the demon and chump block with a grave crawler. So the flying almost doesn't matter. So it'll be interesting to see where the metagame is and we'll see if a desecration demon is actually any good. So yeah, that was uh, the second part of my spoilers and mechanic analysis. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And until next time, I'm Jack the Mind Sculptor.